where it would should be. Good evening and welcome to the Municipality of Monroeville's Citizens Night meeting and agenda setting meeting for February 6th, 2020. <clears throat> it is approximately 7.05 p.m. Could all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All of council is in attendance other than Councilman Arasinko, who is at a outside meeting. Water buffalo. Water buffalo. And we're Where gonna start with testing. our citizens night it's portion testing. of the meeting. If there's anyone that's signed in it's to make a comment right. about any municipal item, now would be your time to do so. Please uh, keep your comments to a five minute time limit. That'd be great to keep the meeting moving along nicely. And if you could just state your name for the record. My name is Pamela Bodziak. I am the assistant director at Monroeville Public Library. And I just wanted to take a couple moments to let you know of some of the recent things that have been going on and what's coming up next. First of all, a tremendous thank you to the Public Works Department for the work they've done around the library. They removed several dead trees from outside before they became a problem, uh, and they also replaced flooring and did electrical work in two different parts of the building. They helped create a new room that will be available for programs and community meetings. Um, we are always looking for more space for people to be able to work. Uh, we can't thank Public Works enough for helping to make that possible. The new space looks lovely. We've gotten a yes, lot of positive thanks. feedback from the community about it. So thank Great. you very much for that. Great. We have some photos from some of our most recent programs. Uh, this first one is our ball drop from 12 o'clock noon on New Year's Eve for anyone who didn't want to stay up that late. We had over 340 community members turn out and we got a lot of positive feedback. This is our, I believe, our third um, noon ball drop, so everyone had a really good time. On the next slide, we have our Lunar New Year party, which was at the end of the month. 136 people came out to celebrate the Year of the Rat. There were origami mice, uh, musical instruments, and a large dragon parade. And finally, we held a rock party at the library. That was 134 uh, people who turned out to learn about geology, do some games and crafts revolving around the topic. So it's been, it's been a busy couple of months. Um, but all good things. Our 2019 statistics are finalized. I'm very happy to be able to share some of the numbers. They can all be found in the last few pages of the report in front of you, but just some of the highlights. Uh, increased, continued increase in circulation and program attendance. This year for the first time we reached 400,000 items circulated. Ooh. So on behalf of Nicole we want to thank the library staff for all of their hard work in making sure that all those materials got to where they needed to go. That's a lot. Uh, we're also very proud of our return on investment which increased again this year to $4.82. This means for each dollar invested into the library, $4.82 worth of services were returned to the community. That return on investment has increased 27% since 2015. We also included an article on the results from a recent Gallup poll that showed that in 2019, U.S. adults made more trips to the library than to any other cultural event, including museums, amusement parks, sporting events, and even movies, which really surprised me. Uh, Americans averaged twice as many trips to the library as they did to a movie theater in 2019. So please feel free to check that article out for more information. And then just a few upcoming programs. Uh, in partnership with Gateway School District, we're hosting a parent workshop on digital citizenship, which includes keeping your children safe online and with uh, social media. Good. That's on Wednesday, Good. February 19th at 7. We'll be holding our third annual Holi celebration on Saturday, March 7th. Holi is a Hindu festival of color that celebrates spring. And this is very exciting news. Uh, Daniel Tiger will be visiting the yes. library on April 4th. Yes. Please stay tuned for more information because we are super excited yeah. about that. So you'll be hearing more about that. 
For our teens and their parents, the Pennsylvania chapter of the National Alliance of Mental Health are coming in to speak about teenage mental health and raise awareness and change perceptions about, um, about <coughs> mental health in general. So both teens and parents are invited to that. That's March 9th at 7. And then a few of our adult programs, we have a tax seminar on Monday, February 10th at 7. Uh, it's all about um, an overview of the 2019 updates and what to expect when filing your return. So there'll be good information there. A uh, program for caregivers, an introduction to Alzheimer's and dementia, discussing the impact on families, how the two diseases differ, and the current research and treatments available. That's on February 28th. And finally, we're hosting a program called Understanding Addiction. It's presented by the Jade Wellness Center, which is an outpatient rehab facility, and it will focus on the biology of addiction, how to shatter its stigma, and prevention strategies. That's March 23rd at 7. Nice. And that's it. Thank, Thank you, Pam. Thanks very much. Very nice. Thank you. Good job as usual. Thank you. Does anyone else like to address council on any municipal item? Seeing none, we're going to close that portion of the meeting and move to our proposed agenda for February 11, 2020. We have an executive session announcement that council conducted an executive session for personnel and litigation reasons prior to tonight's Citizens Night meeting. Beginning at 6.30 p.m. until 7 p.m., council legislative action, if any, shall be taken at the February 11th council meeting. Council, in, uh, in front of you are the minutes of the reorganization meeting of January 6, 2020, the Citizens Night meeting of January 6, 2020, the Council Work Session of January 6, 2020, and the regular Council meeting of January 14, 2020. Any comments, corrections, or additions? Seeing none, we're going to move over to our reports of our tax collections. Council, any questions or comments? <coughs> Very good. List of bills and budget transfers. Mrs. Gatos, do you have any questions? This no, time? I had mine answered. Thank you. Very good. Mr. Poach. Uh, none right now, sir. Mr. Harvey. Lovely. <coughs> Anything this evening, Mr. Dolan? Nothing. Mr. Williams? Nothing. Nothing. Very good. And payroll report, any comments or questions? Very good. Okay. Moving over to our consent agenda, we have new business. Uh, Council, it's in the orange section of your packet. It's 18-4-STAR Building Company, Incorporated. Mr. Little. Okay, applicant is requesting site plan approval to construct 92-unit multi-level apartment building and associated site amenities. The property is located along Evergreen Drive near its intersection with Old William Penn Highway in the R5 Multifamily Residential Use Zoning District. Planning Commission has recommended approval. Welcome. Uh, uh, my name is Ray Gusty from Farrington McCarty Gray. Uh, Jason Kempitz is from AR Building, couldn't make it tonight. He had to go out of town, so I'm filling in for him. So, um, one of the uh, resolutions from the original site plan approval was to limit construction traffic to the west end of Evergreen Drive, which is this yellow, this yellow area here. To tr uh, construction traffic was to come off of Old William Penn up Evergreen into the site and then out the, out the site back down Evergreen to Old William Penn. <coughs> um, <coughs> so AOR Building is now getting ready to schedule delivery for their prefab <coughs> wall panels, the floor trusses, and the roof trusses. Those have to be delivered by tractor trailer. Problem now is there's no room for a tractor trailer to turn around on the site. Oh. So they're asking for your approval to, uh, to come this, uh, the red route, which would be Garden City Drive, down Evergreen to the site, unload, and it continued back down uh, the remainder of Evergreen back onto Old William Penn, which would be like a big loop. How long would those deliveries, do you think those would continue? Um, it's, it's, they have it scheduled for two truck deliveries a day. Tuesday through Friday from 10, between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. And how long? And there would be it's eight, eight section section A is the is the angled section. It would be February and March, and then section B would be so it'd be two April tractor May. trailers a day for a four month. Day, four yeah. days a week. Four days a week. Or a month. 
Are, are you going to have flag people there for traffic control so while they're loading or unloading? Uh, if that's necessary, yes. It's necessary. I've had complaints from residents already that at the beginning of the project that uh, some of the uh, larger vehicles were coming down, going west on Evergreen. And uh, your folks were kind enough to put up a sign, no construction vehicles. And uh, I, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. Only thing is, I don't know how else they're going to get in there. Would there be any kind of um, bond held for uh, the road? Yeah, they, they're aware that they would have to uh, bond the remainder of Evergreen Drive and Gardens. You look at your orange sheets. You go to page three of it, number 11, it's italicized and bold. Okay. It sort of tells you, uh, it rewrites that condition. Okay, that's what I wanted to make sure, uh, that that was do they, have to, do they have to bond the road? Yes. They Thank do. you. Where are they coming from? Would they be coming off the parkway or? I, I think that's probably where they'd be coming from. And the only reason why I ask is, I understand that they couldn't make that turn at the bottom of Evergreen. It's, right. it's pretty rough. Mm -hmm. I was wondering if they came from the other direction, but then there's that tunnel down there. So I, yeah, you still got to walk. Yeah. Well, it's high enough. You're lucky you yeah. could fit a big truck through that tunnel. How, how you think it's going to last a month? Vision spore down there, too. For part A. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, two, uh, two months, February, said. February, March. He's saying two months. Tuesdays through Fridays. We place uh, special traffic sp uh, speed restrictions for the trucks. Well, the problem on that street not going is fast on people right. park on both sides of that street. And uh, that, that creates a, an issue for the larger vehicles. And uh, Are they oversized? Pardon me? I was asking him if they were oversized vehicles. No. Okay. Yeah, but they're, they're normal. WB50, I mean. They're normal 53 foot tractor trailer. Well, they'll make it. But it's only between 10 and 2, right? That would yes. be the, the, that's when they're coming. Right. And that was our concern is that they were traveling and not interfering with the bus schedule. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So, that, so they'll the be done by when? Good. 2. 10 to between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. So it's not too early that the, the sound of the vehicles people will be right. screaming about, and it's and not it's too late. The, it's, it's before, before the, the school buses and all that. Yeah, so the timing sounds good. It's hard to give them permission to build a building and then not allow them to deliver the supplies. But yeah. Should we put up no parking signs here on the street? Well, you're going to have to do that by ordinance, though. Uh, I mean, just temporary put no parking signs? I mean, well, like they can't make it through? <coughs> like they do for parades and... So for it could be considered a parade. I don't think they're going to be enforceable. Oh. I, I, I would think that with a skinny road and irate neighbors, it might be a good idea to put a police officer in that area, no, them ours, no, to no, control no. things. No, 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 that's a big expense. Well, maybe, this, maybe the first day. Is there any other alternative that you guys have thought of besides that space? I mean, in a situation like this, is there any they other? Could bring it in by helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> no, not really. It's just there's a space. I can't see how they can do it. Turn it around. Been done. The other option they had was to back up Evergreen. Oh, the way oh that's back. Oh, that's been. craziness. That's that's the only way they could get. Yeah. A to it's keep truck traffic started. off the other end of Evergreen. Well, then, then they would have to supply the uh, flag people at their expense, not ours. Let me ask you a question. <clears throat> could you unload on Old William Penn Highway and truck it up? No, the, 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 the trusses are too long. They're going to have oh, a crane right. on site. Right, right. Okay. It's just going to reach yeah. over to the truck. Did you have a crane up. to pick it yeah. up? Right. Yeah. You, you have a gravel parking area now, and, and I think that's probably big enough to bring a truck down there and pull off of the road through that gravel parking lot and unload there. It's a night out. That way you wouldn't pair the uh, You mean at the construction truck. site? Where do you mean? Well, you mean where the trailer is? No, where the, where the cars are parked. When you come down Evergreen, make that left turn right across from them two duplexes, there's a gravel parking area there, yeah. which I guess the workers park there. And maybe the park, workers can park somewhere else, and that truck should be able to come down there and get off of the road. Yeah, but the crane won't be able to reach them. The crane won't be able to reach them. Yeah, that's a little problem. Mr. Right? Williams, I think that's a little too far down on the site okay. because the building is up a little bit higher. Yeah. So. 
the off the going to be up yeah. where the uh, tires are like. The offloading of the truck is not an issue, but it actually doesn't take very long. Okay. And remember, time is money to these guys. It's just They're going to get travel. off as fast as they well, can. Well, I, I, I would uh, think that it would be uh, better if you could uh, supply somebody to direct the traffic coming west off of Garden City Drive and uh, sort of, uh, you know, let it go back and forth because if the trucks were there, it's going to make it, uh, they're going to have to park along where the uh, structure is starting. So therefore, by uh, creating a safety zone, that, that flagman can uh, let traffic go, stop, or whatever, mm -hmm. because if you're unloading, you're not going to be able to have someone come down Evergreen until you're done unloading. Suppose the condition that they have uh, flagman we can add that condition that, I think that's what yeah. we have to do I think it's the only way to, to solve this both ends. both ends. yeah sure. you think they'd have a problem with that? I don't think so I think we have to put that in there so so my next question would be if that doesn't work then we have to rethink it when, when's this starting it's February now so when's the first delivery supposed to come in next week this yes Okay. Hopefully you would Wednesday. approve it next Tuesday. Wednesday. Probably, yeah. probably, probably Wednesday. 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 They're in. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, honestly, they wanted to start yesterday, but they didn't do that. So. Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure. Okay. Well, I, time's money. They're not going to be dilly dally, and I, I realize that. Right, right. And if it's only two trucks a day, and we know what times they're coming, and they have flag people there for those four hours so that they're, they're ready to get those what things time unloaded and out of there. That sounds reasonable. I think well, that's. That's probably the best we can I would for. I would think Tom we want to try it and then see Did what kind of response you get. And then, and then let's uh, there's an issue we can deal with it. Let's look at it after a week or so and, and decide if it's working well or if it's Yeah, we'll working. get some feedback from So we're gonna add the flagman then. Yeah. You got you guys have worked with this a number of times in the last Mr. couple of years. So you I'm sorry. follow you through two two Yeah, two two they do. They follow through. through. I'm okay with it. Yeah, I'm comfortable too. Yeah. But we can't vote till Tuesday. All right, so we'll consider this on Tuesday, but we'll get the head. I think we're getting somewhere. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, by the way, do you, do you have a, a place where uh, I've had some phone calls? People want to apply for those apartments right now if they can. Oh. I will get to a Okay. Yeah, give it to Paul and then he can give it to me. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Very good. Council, we have uh, three motions this evening. <clears throat> Mr. Little. Yeah, the first one is uh, the annual uh, MS Consultants, a motion to approve the uh, 2020 Engineering Services with MS Consultants. I have uh, put that in your packet. I also put the, the 2019 rate so you can see the difference in the, uh, the different labor categories there. So that's for your discussion and approval or non-approval on Tuesday. Very good. Any discussion on that item? No, sir. No, sir. Okay, second motion is a motion to hire LGA Partners of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to provide architectural professional services for the renovation of the lobby for the existing Monroeville Senior Center to enhance security and basic control of the entry for costs not to exceed $19,700. Any discussion on that item? We've talked about this uh, off and on. No, sir. Okay, the third one is a motion to hire LGA partners of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania to provide architectural professional services for the Monroeville Municipal Building to develop a strategy and potential renovations for security uh, to the entire building, more specifically for the front entrance at a cost not to exceed $18,000. Any discussion on that? A uh, quick one, sir. The, the one previous that says basic control, also entry control, to include it in both. <coughs> so it covers all of the entry control spaces. I don't think we Correct. need this much. Yeah, in, in both of them. But Including I, uh, like, the, like the police department and the doors and yeah, well, the integrated. Well, as I said, more specifically, we were looking at the area out here, but um, Dave Shaver, the architect, has. Is this in conjunction okay. with getting that grant entrance door put in? No, it, well, I tried, good question, Ron. I tried to combine these. This is going back six, eight months. 
back to the summer. But I, but I, no, it does not because we had to move ahead the, with the money. We're so you didn't run the that long. Exactly. We have to spend the money, the grant money, which is twenty-eight thousand dollars by a deadline by June thirtieth okay. of this, this year. Yes. Is not going to. So, I, so we used MS consultants for I understand. that. Understand. Uh, well, that. Where did these numbers come from? Uh, not to exceed. Not to exceed from the uh, architect, Dave Schaefer. Okay. I'm just wondering why the senior center is more than the municipal building. Well, let me ask you now. Understand that, uh, as, as I've mentioned to council, that the, um, the one for the senior citizen includes a bid package, uh, where the one for the um, where they can put a bid package together and go out for bid, but the one for the municipal building, this is just to put a schematic oh, together okay. to come up with suggestions on what we can do, okay. and that's stated in the uh, in the proposal. Okay. What we can do, um, I, and I'm not going to go into the details of what Dave has mentioned to me out front here in the lobby, but he's come up with a couple different ideas. No, no, we don't want, ideas. You. No, yeah, no, we don't yeah, want to you. right we now. We want you to go. Into yeah, thank fine. you. Just a question. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Rashi had something. Yeah, to I just wanted to make a comment. I mentioned to Mr. Little um, relative to the LGA uh, contracts. Mm -hmm. There's some legal boilerplate in there that I think we have to get a little tweak to to balance out the risk between us and the architect a little more. So I'll work with uh, Mr. Little on that. Very good. And these are all. I mean, same. It's the same company, so they'll be doing some kind of package. Yeah. Uh, work as well. Um, and the senior center, they had three different phases in that package as well. Well, we have to get that legal verbiage straightened up. Correct, course. exactly. Yes. Absolutely. And then all the other renovations, on the second part with the municipal building, to include uh, information, let like me say general renovations also, since I'd like painting, carpeting, et cetera. Is that, that in that second? Well, part? that has nothing to do with this. I mean, no, as far but as I mean, paint has, Yeah, but we're, we're in a pro the capital improvement program is being put together right now, mm -hmm. and that's all going to be part of that. Are okay. we getting that next month? March? Yeah. Hopefully. Boy, you like to talk up those sides of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez, I can only, you know, I can only I'd move like as, you just as fast as I can first. move. Okay. Very good. Uh, council, resolutions. We have uh, two this evening. Mr. Little. A resolution authorizing the display of various event banners at the corner of the intersection of States Route 22 and 48 within the right-of-way of property belonging to the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation. This is a housekeeping item we pass every year for the banners for all kind of different events we have, uh, mostly during the summer months. Any question on that? Next one. Okay, the next one is a resolution authorizing the filing of a Keystone Recreation Park and Conservation Fund grant for the public library facilities for funds for a new air conditioning unit repair of the entry vestibule and repair replacement of the sidewalk ramps and stairway around the building. This would be a matching grant, which we would have to match $225,000 on. It does, in, as it says, it does um, take up and compass a new air conditioning unit, the repair of the vestibule, which has been an ongoing problem. So this whole thing would be a half a million dollars? Yeah, it'd be $450,000, really? yeah. Would any of that be any security? Um, no, this is just with the sidewalk, the ramps, the stairways around the building, the vestibule, and the air conditioning unit. Well, partially, though, because the vestibules. Oh, the vestibule. Yeah, vestibule that would, the main I would part. This yeah. is more for the stormwater. The stormwater the issue. The, the yeah, I know they've had problems with the water coming in, but hopefully with, they're going to do something with the vestibule. They're going to do something with the security yes. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and she this, has been in contact with. This would uh, be authorizing you to apply for that grant? Correct. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. just to apply for it. Okay. Anything else, Council? Nope. Very good. We have one ordinance this evening. Mr. Ratcher, please. An ordinance amending ordinance number 848, regulating traffic, parking, and impounding of vehicles to authorize a multi-stop sign intersection on Bay Hill Drive at Newberry Drive. Where is it? Glenwood uh, Third. Glenwood. Glenwood Plant. Glenwood uh, Condominium. Glenwood. Yeah. yeah. Okay. This is at the, re at the request of their residents. They had a traffic study done. They requested a stop sign on a William Penn. So they, they kind of did the whole thing. And they found no reason for the stop sign on a William Penn, but they found a, this intersection should have a stop sign. Anything else, Council? 
Mm -hmm. Very good. Mr. Rapture, do you have any uh, comments this evening? <coughs> Mayor, thank okay, you. Okay, we'll continue with our reports of our municipal staff. Uh, Mr. Little. Yeah, the uh, college student summer employee applications will be due by April the 17th. Anybody that wants to apply oh, yeah. <laughs> to work here in the office or uh, public works, usually are the two places, please apply by April the 17th. And there's applications on our website or here at the municipal building. Also, you have in your packet uh, property acquisition that the Tricog Land Bank has uh, uh, brought to uh, it's on the last page, um, Snowball Road, 5th Street, and Bruner Drive. Uh, these are the properties that have been brought to your attention in months past uh, for the uh, land bank, Tricog tri Land Bank, to uh, acquire. Any comments on that? You see the letter that is from the yeah, Tricog Land Bank. Wait, Wait where are they? Where's the list? There's one, one with mine. Any questions, Council? About the land bank? I mean, you can read it at your leisure if you want to bring up anything on Tuesday or call me. You can do that. Uh, one thing here on Northern Pike Construction, I've mentioned about three, four months ago that PennDOT will be repairing a slide on Northern Pike on the S-curve, um, the steep curve uh, between Abers Creek and Maria Drive uh, on ter in Turnpike Gardens. Uh, the initial thought was that PennDOT was going to leave one lane open and have a temporary traffic light there. Uh, they have notified us that they are going to close the road down entirely Whoa. for 60 days. Ooh. And the work, Double, will, <laughs> the work will get done more quickly. And also, uh, so Abrams say? Creek will be closed down for a period of time. But whether or not anything Abrams Creek heading north so people can get on 22, that remains to be seen whether that would be done, but they have notified us that sometime this spring when they start, that Northern Pike is going to be closed in its entirety. Mm -hmm. The reason why is if, you, if you're making a left heading west on 22, for instance, and you're in a queue lane, as I do every morning, and you think if, if um, they're letting, they have a temporary traffic light, to let, let's say right at Abers Creek that traffic would back up onto 22. Mm -hmm. And I thought about that myself, but well, uh, they, they, they evaluated that further and said that... I was going to ask you if it would behoove us to make some kind of flyer and give it to Forbes and the people at the old Westinghouse uh, place, because that's probably three quarters of the traffic the that traffic goes through is. there. Yeah. And I think if we notified them early, you wouldn't have such a <laughs> tremendous backup. Well, PennDOT said they are going to be promulgating that in some fashion. I don't know if they're going to be sending it to the hospitals themselves, but I'll talk to the gentleman I talked to. I mean, the hospital. When are they that, doing that? We can let them know. I, I don't. I don't know what to call it, but the old Westinghouse. <laughs> I don't know what the plan is called. Next tier connect. Next tier. Yeah. Next tier. Okay. I can reach out to the management of that building as well, even if they just maybe email all the employees. Yeah. Put a couple postings up or right. something. And I wonder, yeah. but is this going to affect the? Have a sense this will pick up the traffic on Cabot Road. Yeah, we, exactly. Cabot. That's probably the way I'll go. <laughs> right, uh, to, to go back home. So, I mean, it, did the, is there any cause oh, to wow. further notify all, all those folks as well as Turnpike Bar? I mean, I know it's <clears> people, <throat> but that's really a lot more than we had anticipated. Uh -huh. Like, as if PennDOT cares what we think anyway, but he <laughs> well, says tongue in cheek. I don't think there's. Tim, how long did you say for we'll leave out one alone. Actually, they, they have a timeline of 63 days. Starting? Start date? Starting when? Yeah, no, they don't have a start date yet. They don't have a... They didn't tell me a start here. date yet. Mr. Little, what, what about the traffic that's going to come down here? Are we going to put some kind of signs or something? No, no, yeah, in, in, in exactly right. The, really, the brunt of Turnpike Gardens is in, in, initially, people are going to not see the signs when they're out on Moss Side that it's closed all the sucked, way down. Every miles. time there's an accident down at the bottom and then here. And they're going to hit East Patty and they're yep. going to turn in and they're going to be floundering around people that aren't familiar with the area. 
And that's exactly what's going to happen. This is a great start for your term, Councilman Wolf. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'll be standing out there with a sign, huh? Yeah, yeah. Good perfect timing. Good and also the church at a Grace, a Grace, ba Grace Life Baptist Church, is that what, uh, that's going to get some uh, people turning around in there. Some media, and, maybe. And the, yeah. and, the fire, and the fire station. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. they're, they're going to be aware of yeah. uh, I guess what I'm asking is how further back would be west on Northern Pike to start notifying folks. As oh, I far think right at Moss side. Moss side, yeah. Oh, they'll have to go right, right at Moss side. Right. Yeah. yeah. Turn them around through there, too. Yeah, they'll have to do something with that left turn lane on 22. Yep. Now, does that impact, would that impact number four fire hall? <sighs> yes, um, to a certain degree. Yeah. About 80% of the time, actually, the number four leaves the fire station and makes a left. It actually looked at that once, but it does affect the, the reach out to residents to 286 and yeah. and into um, Shangri-La Shangri -La and in and, and that area too. Marysville Plaza. Marysville Plaza. And it will also affect a huge amount of EMS traffic mm -hmm. in from Westmoreland County. Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, so a number of those folks, um, again, reaching out to Forbes is a good idea. Their EMS contact will, will in turn reach out to those EMS agencies in Westmoreland County. They don't try to come though. They, yeah, because right. many of them, that's the only way they know to get to the trauma center. So that the fact that they'll have to go the whole way to, to, to 22 and 48 and come yeah. back, is kind of a, it throws a monkey wrench into it too for income inbound traffic too. So, uh, but their EMS folks, let, you know, can- They'll figure it out. Well, they, know, they have that contact or the ability to do that too, but it, it's actually pretty significant. Well, hopefully PennDOT can get us a more firm date that would right. start notifying people properly and also they're going to have to get that done before they start milling and paving 22 which is that's the final phase oh crap of, uh, they did that. all the prep work last year and they're, <laughs> when they're going to start I, I would assume they're going to be done with that uh, before they start milling and paving 22 from uh, the Murraysville line up to um, the turnpike way the and also at the same time, reach out to, to UPMC East as well <coughs> and their better. EMS contact and let them know um, because they do also get some yeah. traffic that direction. Occasionally, even though you wouldn't think so, but they do. A lot of the ambulances come so, up. Yeah, they are. The orange barrel season is upon us. It will be <laughs> coming upon us. Exactly. As if PennDOT cared. Stop yeah. Anything else, Council? Mr. Can't. Little, anything else? No, that's all. I, I have a question for Mr. Little. This vacancy opens for boards and commissions. Is that on our website? Uh, yes, it should be. Yeah. I'll double check on that. Yeah. With, yeah. Uh, I probably Hammy can read Moore. that. And uh, let, let me let me just read some of the openings in case the public is uh, listening. Library board one vacancy, okay. zoning hearing board one vacancy, okay. planning commission two vacancies, uh, convention visitor bureau one vacancy, recreation and park. Advisory board, two vacancies, uh, and, and some of these are certain wards. Uh, ethics board, two vacancies. Personnel board, four vacancies. Uh, Police Civil Service Commission, one vacancy. And Human Needs and Resource Advisory Board, five vacancies. And we're looking for some qualified individuals to serve on these boards. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Mr. Hugis. Any uh, comments this evening? No, reports? I'm good. Very good. Ms. Rock. I Let's don't have anything. Good. Very good. Excellent. And uh, we'll, even look. we'll go over to our reports of our council members. Mr. Wilson? I just have one comment. <laughs> I'd like to wish my wife happy birthday tomorrow. Oh. And uh, many, many more. Thank you. Very good. Mr. Williams? Uh, nothing this evening. Mr. Wolfram? I have some issues regarding some lighting on uh, certain streets that I'd like to see uh, looked into. Uh, Turn them into Mr. Sedlock. Streets. Pardon me? Turn them into Mr. Are Sedlock. These streets, He's our lighting lights boy. That are out or places None. that don't have lights? You want new ones. Do not have uh, any at all. Yeah. Okay, very dark uh, scenario. Um, people walk their dogs there late, late, t late sometimes, and I myself have come close to almost hitting someone. Isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, done. So. That's done through by a petition that we have to fill out, and then uh, Mr. Little can get you that information once you find the uh, specific areas. And then just get the neighbors to sign up, and then he'll come in front of council, and then we'll notify Duquesne Light. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Harvey, anything this evening for your report? Um, 
If you haven't noticed, the new sign is uh, being constructed at 22 and 48 on the southeast corner. Uh, a lot of the masonry and footers are done, and it's starting to go up. If you remember, you approved this sign uh, some time ago. Uh, I'm going to provide a handout so you can see. Uh, this was given to me by Sean Logan, and you'll be able to see. Uh, <coughs> for those of you that don't remember, there were four illuminated spaces that we were charging <coughs> five thousand dollars a space for and they're filled sean got them filled the only people that are not paying is the hampton because they donated the property uh, so i thought you'd want to see it and if you go past there you'll see the construction's underway mm -hmm. and uh hopefully it'll be done soon and uh i know myself and sean and chief cole are going to be taking a class on how to program the sign uh, I have a meeting coming up with the Glenwood Board of Directors. They have uh, some questions on development items such as traffic and speed control and turnpike expansion, et cetera. So I have a meeting coming up with them. Uh, the MS4 Division of Public Works has taken delivery of some new vehicles, if you haven't seen them. Uh, tandem axle dump and uh, a second single axle dump, I believe, right, Mr. Hugo? Yes, sir. And uh, I think they're going to be waiting for, uh, are you currently waiting for a new VAC truck? Maybe until the end of the year. Oh, okay. And uh, last but not least, I have been provided a meeting schedule for, to visit Monroeville, the CVB, and my first meeting will be in February on the 20th. And um, that's it. Very good. Mr. Poach. Yes, uh, but the only thing is, is we're currently coordinating through the uh, manager's office. Dara is helping us to do that to um, get together with our community polls to continue to finalize moving forward with some of the meetings we've had with them in the past year. Um, we sort of have a sort of self-imposed deadline between uh, their groups and, and ours in recreation of, you know, trying to get everything s uh, squared away by April. So more to come on that. And that's it for now. This is Gatos. Uh, happy birthday, Roseanne. Yes. That's all I have. Happy birthday. <laughs> Very good. And I'll echo that same sentiment. Happy birthday to Mrs. Wilson. Uh, We've been pretty fortunate with winter and, uh, and lack of snow, but there is possibly some snow coming. And just a reminder for the residents to not park on the street yeah. during these events so the plows and salt trucks can get through uh, safely and uh, get the roads cleared off for everyone. And I just want to pass on uh, some condolences for one of our Monroeville residents, uh, Al Waltower. Uh, Pitt Karen, Pitt Karen Bourne, longtime Monroeville resident. He was. Uh, teacher at the Monroeville Junior High School for years, moved up to uh, principal at a few different schools and ended his career as an assistant superintendent at South Butler uh, School District. I uh, served his country for, uh, for years, volunteering his time as a Blue Gold officer, uh, which is uh, through the U.S. Naval Academy, so he would mentor and, uh, and um, interview possible candidates to be midshipmen. Uh, so Al, uh, uh, had a long-term illness, and uh, he is now at peace. But uh, and also Al was uh, my neighbor, and Mr. And Poach's neighbor is well. Lives right between us, yeah. And uh, a super guy, uh, loved by many, and he'll definitely be missed. So my condolences to his family and Nancy. And uh, he was also a classmate of mine. Classmate of, classmate of, of Mr. Wilson. Right, so definitely someone that's been in the community for quite some time, and a heck of a guy. Mm -hmm. So with that, I'd like to seek a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, and good night. <clears throat>